How to Get the Cooking Merit Badge, Part 1. Hi everybody, my name is Andrew Budzinski from Troop 2319. If you haven't already watched the Cooking Merit Badge intro video we have, I highly recommend watching it. Otherwise, let's get started. Starting off with requirement 1A, what are some of the most likely hazards you're going to encounter while you're working on the Cooking Merit Badge? And what are some ways that you can help prevent, mitigate, and respond to these hazards? So I want you to think about this one on your own, but one of the things that you might come across is the handling of raw and uncooked foods, open flames and other hot surfaces, and sharp objects. So there's lots of potential hazards in the cooking merit badge. I'd like you to think of at least two or three other ones that we haven't named here, and then talk about how you can help prevent all of these types of injuries and hazards while you're working on the cooking merit badge and make sure you record that in your merit badge workbook. Next up in requirement 1B, you're going to need to show your merit badge counselor that you know the correct first aid for several different injuries that could occur while you're working on the cooking merit badge. Now the requirement does say show, so these are things that you're going to have to demonstrate to your merit badge counselor in person. To make sure you're ready, let's quickly go over what the proper first aid is for burns, scalds, cuts, choking, and allergic reactions. So for burns and scalds, it's pretty easy. The most common types of burns you're gonna get are uh, class two burns, and those burns are gonna be ones where you were burned on either hot metal in the oven or on a stove, or maybe from hot water. These are burns that are going to blister up and the proper first aid for them is going to be immediately running the affected area under cool water. You don't want to use ice and you don't want to use ice cold water because you don't want to shock your skin, but you do want to use cool constant water. A lot of people also think that you just need to run it under the cool water until it stops hurting and this is not the case. You really need to keep it running under the cool water for at least five to 10 minutes to really help prevent as much damage as possible. For cuts, as I'm sure you know by now, cuts are gonna be pretty common when you're working on the cooking merit badge. It's very easy to cut yourself while you're preparing food. The main first aid for cuts is going to be to make sure you clean out the cut with soap and water to make sure that you don't have any bacteria or anything in it. And then depending on how severe the cut is, you might just need some Neosporin and a Band-Aid. Or if it's a more severe cut, you might need butterfly strips to help hold the cut together to heal properly. When it comes to choking, if anybody uh, starts choking while you're eating your prepared food, the Heimlich Maneuver is always going to be your best bet. Make sure that if anybody starts choking, you let a unit leader know immediately. This is one that you can't wait on. And last up, allergic reactions. So while you're working on the cooking merit badge, it's really important to make sure that you know any food related allergies for anybody who's consuming your food. And it's really important to know how severe those allergies are. We're gonna talk about it a little later, but allergies can range from being mild to pretty severe. And you wanna make sure that you're accommodating anybody who's gonna be consuming your food. In requirement 1C, you're going to describe how meat, fish, chicken, eggs, dairy products, and fresh vegetables need to be stored, transported, and prepared for cooking. To make sure you understand everything, let's quickly go over uh, these answers for meat. So for meat, for example, it needs to be kept cold or frozen from the moment you're purchasing it all the way until you're ready to cook it. So this means you can't leave it out, if you're taking it on a camp out, it needs to be in a cooler with ice, even in cooler weather. You wanna make sure that you're storing it properly, which for raw meat is going to be away from other foods. You don't want to accidentally cross-contaminate um, meat to something else in your cooler. And you wanna make sure that you're going to have enough ice in your cooler to last not only the transportation to the camp out, but also to be through the entire duration of the camp out, as well as to transport the food back home in case it's not all eaten. So in your merit badge workbook, go ahead and go over the 
proper methods to store, transport, and cook fish, chicken, eggs, and dairy products and fresh vegetables. As promised, we're going to talk more about food allergies versus food intolerances and other food related illnesses now in requirement 1D. So do you know the difference between a food allergy and just a food intolerance? Many people might think they're the same thing, but they're really not. Food intolerance is going to typically be when someone can consume a specific type of food, but it maybe just isn't the best thing for them to eat. A good example of this might be somebody who is mildly lactose intolerant. So this is somebody who might be able to consume some dairy products in moderation, but they probably can't eat that much of it without getting an upset stomach or heartburn or something like that. Food allergies are typically more severe. Food allergies, even on their own, can have their own level of severity. Some people who are allergic to, for example, uh, peanuts are okay as long as they don't consume peanuts. But there's also a lot of people who have far more severe allergies where they cannot consume any food that has even been prepared with the food that they're allergic to or in the same area. It's really important to make sure you know any food allergies that anybody in the area that you're going to be cooking for has. And you want to make sure that you don't accidentally include something that somebody is allergic to. At Troop 2319, our outings coordinator does a really great job of coordinating with our grub masters to make sure they know who's in your patrol and who's allergic to what. Our outings coordinator also includes the severity of these allergies so you can help plan around them. Next, make sure you explain in your workbook why someone who handles or prepares foods needs to be aware of these concerns. I know it's somewhat about the safety of the other scouts, but it's really about making sure that you can help prevent any injuries to other scouts. You don't want anybody to have an allergic reaction on a camp out due to the food you've prepared. And as the grub master, it is your responsibility to make sure everybody knows what's in a particular food item before you dish it out. Next up, you need to make sure you also discuss with your counselor why reading food labels is important. I know it might seem obvious we read food labels to find out how healthy something is, but we need to read them for more than that. When you're planning your menu, you need to very closely read the food labels and make sure you know all the ingredients that go into a particular food product. Some scouts might be allergic to gluten or eggs, and it's really important to make sure that not only are you not serving food that has those uh, items in it as a primary element, but you want to make sure that if they were ever the food was ever processed with it before it got to you, that you don't include it. Up next, we're going to talk about requirements to A, B, and C. These all revolve around nutrition. So as many of you probably are already aware, there's a standard called MyPlate. The MyPlate standard is a way of creating a meal plan that helps guide to make sure that you're consuming the correct amount of fruits, vegetables, protein, grains, and dairy in any given meal. To make sure that you completely understand the MyPlate method and understand what foods go along with those uh, different categories, please list five examples of each food group on your workbook. So that's five fruits, five vegetables, five grains, five different proteins, and five dairies. Try and be a little more creative. For protein, yes, you could just say meat, chicken, pork, but try and think of some more unique examples like beans are a great source of protein. Once you've gone through and listed all of your examples for your different types of food, make sure you also explain why it's important to limit your intake of oils and sugars. I'm gonna give you just a second to think about why that's important before we go over that.
So it's really important to make sure you limit your intake of oils and sugars because these are things that, as you can see, are not part of the MyPlate standard. These are things that are often included in pre-processed food and they're really unhealthy. They build up in your body and they're really hard to get rid of. Lastly, in requirement C, you need to determine your daily activity level and your own caloric need. Now this is going to be something that is going to be different for everybody and it might even be different depending on when you do this merit badge. If you're a football player, for example, you might have a higher caloric need during football season when you're out practicing and, and having games. So you need to come up with what your own caloric need is based on your lifestyle. And then you need to come up with your MyPlate appropriate meal plan for yourself for one day. In requirements 2D and 2E, you're going to need to discuss your current eating habits with your counselor. So you can do this on your workbook by filling out, for example, what you consume for a day. And in D, you're going to need to discuss the following labeled terms. So you need to make sure that you understand every single one of these terms. So make sure you describe it in your workbook so that we can come back to it when you need it later but you're gonna to need to define calorie, fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, dietary fibers, sugar, and protein. If those are all sounding familiar, it's because you see them all the time on the nutri nutrition facts which are required to be on any food products sold in the US. Lastly, you'll need to explain in your workbook how to calculate the total carbohydrates and nutritional values for two servings of a particular food item based on the serving size specified on the label. So for this, go ahead and just go out and find a, a food item and explain how to calculate the total carbs and the nutritional values for two servings of whatever that food item is. In requirement 3A, you're going to need to discuss each of the following cooking methods with your merit badge counselor. And for each one, you need to describe the equipment needed, how to maintain proper temperature control, and you need to name at least one food that can be cooked using that method. So let's start off with baking. So in order to bake, you're probably going to be at home, though not necessarily. And so the equipment needed is probably going to be an oven. The way you'll maintain proper temperature control while using uh, an oven is by setting the temperature on the oven itself. Pretty much every oven nowadays maintains its own, own temperature using an internal thermometer. That being said, it's important to make sure you don't accidentally leave an oven door open because the oven will, will cool down and it could change how long your food needs to be cooked for. And what's one item that needs to be or can be cooked by baking? I'm gonna say a baked potato. I love baked potatoes and it's always worthwhile to put them in the oven and let them take as long as they need because you're gonna get the best crunchy outer skin with the inside of the potato being nice and soft. They are delicious. Okay, so now that we talked about baking, you need to do exactly what we just did for boiling, broiling, pan frying, simmering, steaming, microwaving, grilling, foil cooking, and cooking with a Dutch oven. I know that sounds like a lot, but this is a really great requirement to talk about with other scouts or with your parents at home to see what types of cooking they use most frequently and what are some things they cook using those methods. In requirement three, we're gonna talk about the ultimate showdown between So really, what's the difference between using a camp stove versus cooking on charcoal or wood fire? So there's a lot of different differences and considerations to take into account when you're planning on cooking on either of these methods. Typically, you're going to want to camp, uh, cook on a camp stove for things that require boiling large amounts of water. This is known to be a lengthy task when doing it over charcoal or a fire. 
And you may want to do things like if you're having to use a griddle, for example, pancakes. It's definitely possible to cook pancakes on a griddle over charcoal or a wood fire, but at the same time, it's really hard to keep a griddle perfectly level when you're working on a campfire. So what are some things that you might want to use charcoal or wood fire for? So anytime you're doing any of your foil pack cookings, also known as mountain men, or Dutch oven cooking, those are times when you're definitely going to want to use charcoal or wood fire. There's pros and cons to both methods of cooking, and you're going to find that sometimes different methods are better. For example, one thing that I always really like to do is I like to cook in a Dutch oven using charcoal, especially on campouts where it's going to be cold in the morning for breakfast. There's something about having a nice mountain man casserole in a Dutch oven that really warms people up. The downside to cooking on charcoal or wood fire is there's a lot more preparation that's required. You have to be up early to make sure that the charcoal gets going because it's not as easy as just turning on a stove. Try and think of at least a couple food items that you'd want to cook on a camp stove and at least two or three that you think are better to cook using charcoal or wood fire. 